Oops, that is the wrong shit. I clicked the wrong thing. That, there's the right scene. There we go. <laughs> um, with, with that starting us off, uh, welcome to the Game Session Podcast. Uh, I'm your host, Jose, slash Seth Rikage. This week, I am joined by Corey. Hello, I'm Corey. <laughs> Ind- indubitably. And we're also joined by Atma, who... Uh, Shall be making some more frequent occurrences, it would it would seem as if, yes. I hope so. Yay. Hello. Member slash rotating slash good friend, all around good person, yes. I I agree with all of those statements. I agree with all the positive attributes that you have given to me, yes. Yes, yes, very much. Please distribute more at your nearest convenience. <laughs> <laughs> Um, Game Session Podcast is filmed here live at 6.30 p.m. PST on Sundays. You can find it later on podcast services as well as on YouTube as full episodes and individually cut up segments. Uh, With that out of the way, let me go ahead and thank my patrons and Twitch subs, which I keep the list right around here. Uh, So for patrons, uh, Ramen Nomad, Sly, Force Big Boss, and Bo. Thank you for that. And for Twitch subs, I want to give a shout out to Canty Unplugged, Ramen Nomad, King Cory Bear. Hey, that guy seems familiar. Uh, <laughs> Shy Bum, J Newy, 666, uh, Aztec God, Nitro, Lurvinar, and Atma Phoenix, who also seems familiar for some reason. Weird. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, with that out of the way, um, yes, let's. Let's just jump straight into the <laughs> the, the, the direct stuff. So sh- rough sh- show format for today. Um, let's do the Nintendo stuff. Then we'll jump into the new releases, and then we'll jump into other miscellaneous news and whatnot. Um, so yeah, Nintendo Direct happened what last month or not even last? I guess just Monday or whatever. Tuesday, I think. I think it was, Tuesday. It was my birthday, so it was Tuesday. Yeah. It was a special day indeed. <laughs> <laughs> uh overall thoughts Atma. good direct or bad direct i i thought it was a very good direct i i didn't i was out for the the xbox um and square enix conferences but of everything that i did see like i felt like the nintendo direct was the best thing to come out of e3 there was a lot of stuff specifically for atma so a very atma oriented direct yeah what about you, Corey? <laughs> just, just overall thoughts. Um, honestly, I, uh, I mean, I caught, I caught the, like the video of the Nintendo Direct, so I was able to like skip through the things I really wasn't interested in. Um, which is the benefit of that. Uh, I think the most things I am interested in are um, probably the new Metroid because it does look, it does look interesting. Um. It was like the two the 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 side scroller one. I can't remember the what's the sub name for that one. It's like um Dread. 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 Yes, thank you. Like Judge Dread. Um not voiced also, by Sylvester Stallone. But <laughs> also the fact that they like they're like, hey, but don't worry, we haven't forgotten about Metroid Prime 4. And I'm like, okay. But I think I think uh I, I'm I'm going to be basic here and say that I'm I'm just absolutely stoked to be uh, to actually have some Breath of the Wild two footage. Um, I, I I literally can't wait. I just I love Zelda so freaking much. <laughs> um, I think for me overall, I think it was pretty solid. Um, I admittedly haven't been playing on my Switch too much lately. I already have a. I'm trying not to use the word backlog. I'm trying to exclusively stick to the word collection. Like it might seem like a weird semantical jump, but it has a much more positive outlook. I don't feel as stressed about trying to get to stuff. I'm just like, hmm, should I really be finishing uh, Ratchet and Clank? I'm just like, you know, nah, I just feel like playing some Siege. It's cool. I'm going to do what I feel like. Um, oh, but yeah. Oh. And, and also, I forgot one other thing. Uh, I am also excited for Fatal Frame. Ooh, yes. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> shoot, where was I? I forget. It's okay. Corey was talking, and Corey talking is always a good thing. I will never, com- <laughs> I will never complain about such a thing. Yeah, but about so- your collection, yes. Yeah. Um, sorry about that. Energy drink gives me the burps. Um, so yeah, let's just go down the list of some of the announcements. If I happen to miss anything, um, whether it's co-hosts or people watching, feel free to chime in. Uh, Smash Bros got a new fighter. Uh. It's uh, what's the dude's name? Uh, Kazuya from Tekken 
I never played too much Tekken growing up, but it seems like a good pick. I I love that he's just tossing dudes into uh into the volcanoes. Seems very on point for what he's done in his own series. But uh, I, uh, I think I I played Tekken three. I think that was on the PS one. I think that was the big fighting game I had on the original PlayStation way back in the day. I played a lot of Tekken three, so I'm familiar with Kazuya. Kazuya. I usually. I usually would play Tekken in arcades uh, growing up. I, I never really, I don't think I actually, well, mm, maybe I did have a Tekken game. I just don't remember very, very, uh, very well. Cause I wasn't, I, I, I was more into like Mortal Kombat and like, I would, I think I actually played more like Dead or Alive than I did with Tekken, you know? I feel like I have to ask, but which Dead or Alive? I want to say Dead or Alive two so I not the booby saying. volleyball one i mean i have seen that before but i have i don't think i ever played that one <laughs> you're not missing out <laughs> i know i know <sighs> oh my god um yeah um i haven't played smash in a quick minute i i loved smash growing up but i uh, didn't necessarily have too many people locally to play with but uh cory's right around the corner so that might change i'll have to put cory in his place I haven't played Smash in a while, so you probably very well might. <laughs> <laughs> but um, uh, yeah, yeah, I mean, cool character. Uh, I'm just, I'm just waiting for Sora to be thrown into Smash. It just has to. It is crazy to me more, that they- one more chance. <laughs> it's, it's like the obvious yeah. choice, right? I mean, I just he, they keep. He, I, here's my here's my issue. They keep throwing in Fire Emblem characters or slash anime characters. Uh or they keep throwing in like actual like fighting game characters which makes sense i understand like it's a it's a fighting game but like you're talking about a game that has freaking like mario and sonic and like metal gear and like at, like in in the same game like think more outside the box nintendo don't just put fi- don't put fighters in a fighting game like come on like <laughs> I, I don't know i think they could use like maybe like 10 extra fire emblem characters oh yeah just at least at least 10 more <laughs> there's so many more fire emblem characters you know yeah i mean you get like 30 allies in each game why not just shove all of them in there yeah yeah get get some more freaking incest and eugenics going <laughs> on and yeah. i don't think i've had the fire emblem discussion with either of you but there's some there's some messed up shit in there <laughs> um, well, I, under- I I understand they really wanted to draw in the Fire Emblem community because um, there is a big following for Fire Emblem. Like, let's be honest. So they wanted they wanted Fire Emblem players to have a reason to actually enjoy playing Smash Brothers. There, so. it, it is not a coincidence that Fire Emblem was financially saved the second they put in dating elements in there. Mm-hmm. Wait, what, what are people saying in chat? Um, uh, Waypoint set CJ, our, our buddy CJ on from last week, says for suggestions f- to be Master Chief, Kazuma Kiryu, CJ from San Andreas need to be in Smash. <laughs> Hell yeah. Oh CJ's ultimate is is a train and he has to catch up to it or something. <laughs> or that maybe is number- true. Uh, <laughs> Canty Unplugged did make a statement saying dating elements improve all games. That's a fact, actually. Um, yeah. uh let's see uh breath of the wild 2 it showed off some weird stuff to be honest so it's just just some stuff i caught from it is uh there's a lot of falling from the sky kind of like in the same vein as skyward sword um there appears to be some kind of new power where you turn into a green little teardrop but you float up and through objects there's a bunch of sky land masses once again kind of like skyward sword which is kind of making me see why they're remastering that one in particular uh set for 2022 and apparently you can have a flamethrower which is pretty cool yeah like it suddenly with seeing that footage it makes sense why they are doing a remaster of skyward sword because mm-hmm. they are extending the map of uh hyrule to now include the sky so it's like you know here yeah. we are <laughs> What about you, Otman? Any thoughts on Breath of the Wild 2? Uh, so I am one of those strange, weird people that did not like Breath of the Wild. Um, so I have 
no thoughts head empty. I am, I am curious uh, and, and more power to you. Cause I, I don't think that's strange at all. I have heard of people like not liking it. What is your reasoning? I would like, I'm curious. Um, so I really like the normal Zelda formula. And mm-hmm. like, I know a lot of people really enjoyed Breath of the Wild because it broke the sort of tedium of going to a dungeon, getting the thing, using it in the dungeon, going to the next dungeon and like the open world and just being able to climb everywhere, do everything, like not having any direction whatsoever was like a freedom for a lot of people. And I have realized I like a little bit of direction in my games and I like zelda's formula because you don't get that in any other game like there's darksiders and there was like 3d dot game heroes on the ps3 Mm -hmm. and that's a deep cut right there thank you yeah yeah (laughs) (laughs) and i got it because i like zelda like games and things like that where you have dungeons and things and so i played like two three hours of breath of the wild i finished the first I got all the stuff and left the plateau and I started wandering around and I was like, I don't know what to do. Yeah. Oh God. I, yeah. I, and I have, and I had like no motivation to actually go anywhere either. And I, mm-hmm. I think like I just, the open world didn't click with me the way it does in other games. And so I just ended up dropping it. And like, I'm happy for everyone who loved the first one and getting their sequel. And I'm excited to see if maybe this one does new things that, draw me in i'm mm-hmm. always up for trying it but for now just and i i i i totally that's totally valid and that's i totally get that um cause, because literally there have been games by similar example uh i i the last assassin's creed game i ever played was was black flag i literally turned on uh odyssey i played like the first couple of like missions I looked at the map. I just set down my controller and I walked away. I literally <laughs> like it is beyond massive. And it's just, it's one of those things that I just wasn't invested enough in to give it that much time that it needed. Right. Um, and so I, I totally get that. Uh, I love, I, I'm, I'm, I'm of the like mind of, of, I like the linear. I like, I like Zelda being a little open world, and having that linear path, like, okay, this is, I, I know what to do next, but I can still kind of go off and do extra stuff here, but not to the point where I, you get completely lost, you know? Um, so I understand. I understand. Yeah. It's really funny that you picked Assassin's Creed Odyssey because I spent like 110 hours in that <laughs> game and that one just drew me in <laughs> because I, I love yeah. Greek mythology. So I was just like a hundred percent all in on ancient Greece and like I was doing yes. everything in that game. So I, th- I think it's funny you point to uh, Odyssey as a, as an example, because um, th- there's like two modes in there. There's like, there's like exploration. And then I forget if they just call it like classic where it's like, do you want waypoints exactly where you're supposed to go? Or do you want like a hint for the region? You have to go there. You have to scout it out. And um, so I guess like kind of like Breath of the Wild versus like more traditional. And like I started off in that Breath of the Wild, just like, yeah, tell me the rough region. I'll scout with my hawk. And just like after like 10 hours, I'm just like, yeah, no, fuck it. I just let, let, let's streamline this a little bit. If you think like- about it, though, if you think about it, though, this isn't the first uh, as far as Zelda. This isn't the first open world Zelda we've gotten because uh, Wind Waker was pretty open world. And you were on a boat and you're on a boat. Motherfucker. And the, and, and, the, the, and, the, <laughs> and the soundtrack on while you're on the ocean is just great. fucking beautiful. So. I, I think a lot of the issues for me with Breath of the Wild, and I think I've played it to completion with like all the shrines, and whatnot, like three times. I'm, wow. I'm, I'm kind of obsessive with that. I did it um, once and I was good. I, I didn't. <laughs> this is going to sound bad, and I've talked about it before. I did not enjoy my first playthrough, and then I'm just like these systems and mechanics and just like how everything's entirely way too open there's not much of a narrative hook like none of that clicked with me but until like maybe like the 80 percent mark of the first place i'm just like oh yes this makes sense now i'm gonna travel i'm gonna i'm gonna look at the map see if there's any weird little divots or anything mm-hmm. like out of the ordinary because then i'm gonna be like there's a fucking Koroxy there. I fucking know it. And sure enough yeah. you show up there you see a rock out of place you're like yeah i know what's going on mm-hmm. um but yeah, I think uh, I think I'd prefer like a more traditional Zelda setup, I guess. Yeah, 
yeah, and that's fair. I think I, I have a feeling they're they're gonna keep. I I don't think they're gonna keep things completely the same because I feel like if they just literally reuse the whole the, the same map over again, it would literally just shut down so many players and like, no, I'm not I'm not doing this shit again. Like I don't want to do all this shit, all the same shit, and I see all the same stuff all over again. Like they need to they if they're gonna be bringing in the second one, they need to bring it in with like fresh new scenery um new ma- like new kinds of missions i think they are going to still keep the open world aspect but maybe they'll do what atma is saying uh and and have a little bit more direction i um, i know it's not really par for the course for zelda but i would love maybe some more in-depth combat aside from just like the one attack button like you, you can do um you can do like perfect dodges you can do some parries with a shield and whatnot but how how did the two of you feel about the weapon degradation? Like like to me, I got used to it. It wasn't a burden, but it wasn't actively like, oh yes, I I enjoy having it in here. Like I could go either way. I'm I feel like I'm the same. I I I honestly could go with or without it. It doesn't really make a difference to me. Yeah, um, I I didn't have any particular feelings for or against it. One thing I did though have an issue with. I don't I don't think I don't think many people have an issue with this. But I have an issue with it because most Zelda games have an, has a have a musical instrument in the game that you can use, and the fact that they didn't have they didn't implement a musical instrument deeply saddened me. Because like Ocarina of Time, Majora's Mask, they both have the ocarina. You get Wind Waker, Wind Waker with the freaking baton. You get uh, you get a harp in Skyward Sword in Twilight Princess. You you're a wolf that howls like. You know, it's just give me a musical instrument. Your musical <laughs> instrument is your sword as you carve a symphony of death through your enemies, Corey. <laughs> no, they gave you an iPad that's clearly better than a musical instrument. You can Obviously. play MP3s on the, the Yeah, your musical instrument is every time you get closer to a shrine and it does that dit, 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 or whatever sound it is and it just won't turn off. <laughs> I just I, I I like I don't know what it is, but I really like musical instrument implement uh, implanta- implantations Im- I, don't Im- know. Imp- 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 <laughs> I like it when they implement music musical stuff like in games because it's it like there's there's i i don't know there's like no other game that's that's similar to when you get to use the ocarina in ocarina of time and majora's mask like it's I, just it's so unique you know I, I feel um, like I'll understand the two of you on a very deep human level by asking this question. Favorite Zelda game? Ocarina of Time. <laughs> Link to the Past. Ooh. That's a good that's a really good one. See, I I'm I'm stuck. I would either say Wind Waker for overall, and just I love the music in there, or Majora's Mask for how fucking weird it is. I have I have beaten Wind Waker, I think two or three times and Majora's Mask I think that many times I've beaten Ocarina of Time I can't even count like so many (laughs) many I've I've played Link to the Past and beaten it way many times I've played Link's Awakening a bunch because that was my go-to game for the Game Boy when I went on like vacations as a kid I would just play through Link's Awakening every time I went on vacation did you nice. play the uh, remake they did a couple years back? I did. I love it. It's fucking it beautiful. Really, yeah, it I still, so I still need to play that. It's on my on my list of go go. Like I need to go back to and play it, that. <laughs> it has some obtuse puzzles here and there. Like you'll more than likely have to look up like how to advance at some point. But mm-hmm. it, it's yeah, really I, good. It, it, it's so like I knew what I was doing, and I was like people who are doing this for the first time will have no idea what the hell to do. This is so weird. Like, how did I figure this out mm-hmm. as a kid? Like, yeah. Yeah. The early Zelda's, I want to say like, even maybe, maybe not links to the past had the issue, but there's just like some really obtuse. just like, how are you realistically supposed to figure that out without talking to someone or looking up a guide or, and it was harder back then. You didn't, you couldn't just go IGN.com slash walkthrough, whatever. Yep. Exactly. You had to have like a walkthrough book or something. Mm hmm. Remember those? It, it, Remember walkthrough books? Oh my gosh. It, it was a hard ask going to mom saying like, hey, can you spend uh, back in the day, those games could be like fucking 90 bucks, you know, and then inflation on top of that. Mm-hmm. Um, and just like, hey, you bought me this really expensive thing. Can you buy me the book for it too? 
<laughs> yeah. I was like, oh, fuck off. <laughs> mm-hmm. We, uh, side note, like literally growing up, um, we would, uh, when the internet was still young uh, and I was still a, uh, a dewy eyed little gamer. Um, to be fair, you still are. I still am. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> But uh, my 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 brother or my mom would uh, print out like you know how when people would like li- I mean people still do it nowadays but like you know how when people would ear- early on they would type entire like custom walkthroughs of like in like HTML format and then you could print that out on your home printer and like just go through it we would do that for like all like uh horror games or like you know like silent hill like the original silent hills when we were going through them we would literally have my mom like reading the strategy guide while we went through it mm-hmm. and like uh, and she's like oh wait no go back to this door or something like that and <laughs> <laughs> i was uh so crazy. i was just i was just typing in a chat just like i i legitimately miss like just going to like whatever random grocery store just being like let me grab a copy of nintendo power or get a game guide like half the time um i would just read through the guide for fucking fun just like find out secrets and then make maybe i even get the game like a year later i'm just like huh i already know everything there is to know about this right yeah that was a fun experience i think growing up is is literally those game guides my my favorite game guide is for uh, Final Fantasy VI, um, oh. because the it, I don't remember exactly who wrote it, but it's like it's almost written like a story, and it's like funny. There is humor involved mm-hmm. and everything, and sometimes instead of playing the game, I'll just read through the guide again and mm-hmm. get like nearly the same experience as playing the game and. Uh, yeah, that that's always been my favorite guide that I've ever ever purchased is that specific one. That's pretty cool. Yeah, I love that. Um, oh yeah, no. Uh, oh, sorry. Go ahead. Oh yeah. Um, let's let's talk about our long lost uh, franchise that everyone was pretty sure was basically dead at this point. Uh, Metroid's back. It has a has a new two point five D game. I guess that's what people kind of refer to it nowadays. Um, yeah, it, it's, it looks like a regular 2D Metroid game. Um, big emphasis on being chased by a big, giant, scary robot, kind of like a stalker-type enemy you'd see in a horror game. Mm-hmm. And then they, they kind of even done that previously with... Um, in, in Metroid Fusion, there was like a very powerful enemy you couldn't really fuck with too much. Um, I believe it was called the Sax... Uh, the Saxophone? Yeah. I thought that's what I called it as a kid, because that was the funniest shit. Um... <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it has, has some cool additions in it. There, there's melee combat, which I guess they added in the Samus Returns remake on 3DS. There's parrying. Um, it's coming out in... What month is 10? Is that October? I'm bad at this. Yeah, October. 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 There we go. There's, Scary. There is a there's a lot of games coming out in October. I'm like, surprised I'm, how much shit is, yeah. Yeah, it's there's so many things coming out in October. I'm surprised. But I mean, at the same time, I'm not surprised because it seems like Q3 and Q4 of 2021 is like a lot of like the game release windows, not just for the holiday season, but like because the pandemic pushed so many things back, you know? Mm -hmm. So let's see. Oh, and they also announced like, yes, we are still working on Metroid 4. I know we announced that forever ago, Mm -hmm. uh, but still working on it, Which, which, which to me um i mean i'll just play games when they come out i'm not gonna spend all my time on reset era or or game facts god forbid if you want to spend your time on game facts uh just going just like where is this game i need it now i'm just like i don't know i'll, I'll wait till it says like it's coming I, out next month i'm like cool i'll play it yeah, then. that's that's i i have a friend who has the same strategy and i i literally have adopted that strategy too where i literally like i will try to forget about a game entirely and then it's like, oh, guess what? It's coming out next month. And I'm just like, oh, yay, hype. Let's go. Mm-hmm. Like, <laughs> But even on like the other end, just like even pragmatically speaking, I'm just like, yeah, maybe don't announce your game like entirely way too ahead because then, you know, you're going to deal with people. They're just going to harass you the whole time. Just just wait till it's done, basically. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, any big Metroid thoughts, Atma? Um, I like Metroid whoa <laughs> um, controversy I, I yeah yeah no I, i'm really um really going out there wild opinions right now uh, <laughs> i 
I actually prefer 2D Metroid to the Metroid Prime games. Um, I like the Prime games. They're, they're great. But uh, Super Metroid was my jam. Um, so getting a new 2D Metroid is really exciting for me. I haven't played anything since Fusion. I Samus Returns was always on like my like i almost said bucket list but it's not quite that it's just <laughs> the thing. uh yeah that that list of games like i'll i'll get to that eventually and then you know it was on the 3ds and then i got a switch and i forgot my 3ds existed because everything's on switch now and so like i heard samus returns was good i just never got around to playing it mostly mm-hmm. because i think i had the real like archaic sort of primal fear of metroid 2 for some reason like the game boy because it was like just green and black when i tried to play metroid 2 on the game boy it scared the shit out of me as a kid Mm -hmm. oh wow and so i guess there was sort of like general instinct of like i don't want to play this it's going to scare me when like Mm -hmm. it probably won't Mm -hmm. i it's funny it's funny um that you say like super super metroid is your jam and everything so i actually never really played metroid growing up i i only ever know knew the metroid prime games because my brother liked to play those um and uh i i actually played through a little bit a good chunk of super metroid by doing it on the super nintendo simulator on on the switch and um, I think I have a, a, a new appreciation for those kinds of games. And I actually really, I found out that I really enjoyed them because not because I ever played, not because I played Super Metroid, but because in the past I've played, um, what was that one game? It was like, it was like Castlevania, but not really. It's like something, Are you, something. Uh, was it a callback or did it come out back in the day? It was it was like a remake of of a, of a classic game. I have my Steam up. I can actually Are tell you. Are you talking about what Axiom game. Verge? Maybe. No, I was I it was it Bloodstained. Bloodstained. Thank you. Yeah, it was Bloodstained. So I literally I played Bloodstained like the remake of the original. Um, freaking oh. loved that game. I I absolutely loved that game. It was so much fun. Um, and then I also played uh, Castlevania Lords of Shadow: Mirror of Fate which was a also just like like a side scroller but also you know a metro a castlevania classic castlevania game and i really really enjoy that one um and then i and then i'm like oh i want to try out like a classic metroid game so let's do super metroid and i was like really enjoying it i was like oh this is this is awesome and then same with like games like ari and the and the blind forest and and the will of the wisps similar kind of aspects Mm -hmm. um so uh, I, I I didn't uh, originally know, but this was something I discovered about myself fairly recently that I like those kinds of games, uh, and it was just unlocked inside of me. <laughs> so I, the, the the most important question I have to ask: Have you mm-hmm. played Hollow Knight? Ooh. I I have a little bit. So I've I did. I got, I think I got through like two parts of it, and I got stuck, and I haven't gone back since. I, so I I think it's one of those things that I literally have forgotten all about it, and I just need to start it over and go and go and do it fresh. It is definitely I, easy to get stuck in that. I mm-hmm. have a lot of anxiety about starting Hollow Knight because, like, I love the Souls games, but I have to like really hype myself up to be like be in the mood for them. I'm just like, oh fuck, this is gonna be a hard time. I'm gonna have to Google some shit. Mm-hmm. I'm just like, I gotta prepare myself. And like, Hollow Knight is like, I, I kind of know like the rough format it's gonna be going for. I'm just like, yeah, it's gonna be some new stuff I have to get used to. I'm just like, eh. But I'll, it's I'll play it not, eventually. It's not nearly as bad as a Souls game. Like, it is okay. a lot more user friendly than. Yeah. It, it definitely has elements of Souls, but it is much closer to like Metroid or Castlevania than like hate yourself souls yeah you want to you want to you want a souls game that's like uh like that just play freaking um what is it blasphemous or or salt and sanctuary you know yeah like, salt and sanctuary yeah. yeah i can't say it salt and sanctuary is actually pretty good and they announced the uh what's the sequel salt and sacrifice i believe is the second yeah one. That's I, I i have salt and sanctuary but i haven't been able to get through it it's just there's so many games so many oh. games <laughs> also, I want to em- emphasize for everyone, uh, Ori in the Blind Forest and Ori and uh, Will of the Wisps, 
mm-hmm. very fucking good games. Absolutely, I have played, they're, they're beautiful I've, too. Yeah, I've played Blind Forest. I do eventually want to go and uh, go in and play Will of the Wisps. Yeah. Uh, so you're gonna need some tissues. Oh no, <laughs> it, it's gonna be sad. <laughs> mm-hmm. Don't um, tell me you- that. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm excited for a new Metroid game. Excited it's a 2D. As much as I enjoyed um, Metroid Prime, I feel like first person isn't necessarily conducive for exploration games because you're trying to look for like every detail and the FOV is kind of limited. Um, I did like scanning for stuff. They had cool little lore stuff you could find everywhere. Mm-hmm. I st- maybe, maybe this is a weird take. I don't necessarily consider metroid prime to be a first person shooter even though you're technically shooting things in the first person perspective it's just Mm. not like one of your primary verbs you kind of do it once in a while or when you run into like a legit encounter and not just like a random little spiky dude roaming around minding his own business before you blow it up it's a first person 3d platformer you know so it's like yeah I, i think it was described as first person adventure at one point oh okay that's I, I, <laughs> yeah like it's it's oh, it's not a it's not a shooter it, it's first person for sure also, and you do shoot things but not a shooter i will say that when you do upgrade things in uh metroid prime it's pretty badass oh just it's like, pretty fucking cool the, the animations okay. for suit upgrades is just great <laughs> i i love the endless questions people came up with just uh how does samus physically fit into the morph ball she converted into energy if if Samus is, is pregnant while she goes into the morph ball, what happens to the baby? Oh my god! <laughs> such a, the look on your face, off. <laughs> why for, why do people no stop? For, for what it's worth, I didn't come up with it. This, this is just <laughs> shit I've seen. <laughs> First of all, Sam, Samus is very careful, and she's not just going to get pregnant and go on a mission. I'm sorry, like. <laughs> <laughs> Jeez. You crazy. You crazy. Be responsible. Be responsible. <laughs> uh, don't play uh, Other M. Apparently Other M's bad. I, I've kind of steered clear. <laughs> yeah, I've played Other M. Before we jump into the next topic, could I jump into a, a, a news topic of my own? I grant the king permission. Okay. <laughs> I, I... So uh, I have a news topic. Um, very brief. Um, basically if anybody knows about the game, uh, abandoned that was announced, I believe in April, if I'm not mistaken, abandoned was announced in April. And this is when we get into Corey conspiracy, Corey's conspiracy corner. This is what I like to call, (laughs) uh, and, and, uh, the reason it's a conspiracy is because I'm just going to flat out say this and I've watched enough information on it and I've looked up all this information that I am like almost certain it is a silent hill game um i am almost certain because here's here's the thing uh hideo kojima does this shit over and over and over and over and over again oh quick question is is this a blue box thing yes it is a blue box thing the blue box thing it's blue box thing because blue box is a new very very new company and they've only ever published like one or like s- apparently seven games, but you can't find any information about them online. There's nothing online about them. Uh, if there is, it's very minuscule. Um, also, Hideo Kojima, literally in his like in his director's cut trailer, um, the main character of Death Stranding was dressed in blue and then put himself in a box, blue box. You know, and I know this is really starting to sound like I'm on a whiteboard and I'm like, God, believe me, (laughs) the dots, they all connect. Yes. (laughs) Like, no, but like, but like for real, like literally there's been ramping up of Silent Hill as well. Like literally Dead by Daylight got got Silent Hill. Um, uh, The freaking that 3D horror Pac-Man game. I can't remember what it's called. Dark Deception. Right. Yeah. That they got a Silent Hill uh, chapter in there. Um, they're coming out with new Silent Hill merch. Uh, I think they actually just revealed today that they have new Silent Hill merch. And like, uh, what was I going to say? Um, there's just there's there's a lot of winking and there's a lot of coy nodding 
and things between Hideo Kojima, Jeff, uh, Jeff Keeley, and Blue Box, and and all this stuff, and everyone's just like really hush hush, but they're just like they're throwing out all these little tiny hints here and there, and they literally Blue Box actually did a tweet. They actually did a tweet where they're like a uh, abandoned. Uh, aban- or abandoned, guess the real name, first letter S, last letter L. And it's like, it's Silent Hill. Like, I don't, <laughs> <laughs> like, and also on the 22nd of this month, which is on Tuesday, they are releasing an app on PlayStation 5 that is, uh, it is, a ba- it's called the Abandoned uh, Trailers app. And so they're literally releasing like gameplay and trailers and things like for abandoned. And so people are thinking that this is basically another PT situation where it's a, it's a playable demo. And then at the end, it's going to reveal what the actual title is. Mm -hmm. From everything I've seen, it it would, it would appear as if, uh, cause I did peek my head into the reset era thread and like, yes, there's a bunch of like very odd, weird, um, coincidental circumstantial evidence and whatnot that like totally points like there's something weird going on with it but from like what i've been seeing from a lot of journalists is that they're very convinced it is not so i don't know there, there's there's conflicting stuff but just and, think and of, it feels think like of a the lot- name jose think of the name it's literally called abandoned yeah. as in silent hill was abandoned so to speak i i, I know. know i'm just but, but a, a lot of people's thoughts are just like that studio is like me, getting themselves just, into some hot water with some with some bad marketing pr or whatever but let me just find my tinfoil I'll, hat real quick I'll, 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 I'll tell you what <laughs> if if i'm just gonna wait i'm gonna chill if it turns out it's silent hill cool otherwise i'm just be like silent hill's dead and i'm not gonna get my hopes up no, if this ends up not being Silent Hill, then I will go. I will go back to my default and be like, "Okay, it's dead. It's not coming back." But until I'm proven wrong on Tuesday, we'll find out. <laughs> but, but before we toss to Atma, I just want to say the last two times we have made bets on this show about who would be right, I, I've won two out of the last two. Third time's the charm. Yeah, I mean, you're, yeah, I'm not gonna argue with that. Fuck me. <laughs> Atma, any any thoughts on this whole thing? Oh. Uh- I'm not super invested in Silent Hill. I'm not like the the uh, scary survival horror genre is not really my thing unless it's Dead Space. And, yes. and so, they ruined that series with three. Yeah, they they <laughs> kill they killed that one pretty effectively. Yeah. Um. So and like, I like part of me just wants to go full conspiracy theorist and be like, hell yeah, this is some weird Kojima bullshit. I, I want to be on the train. But the mm-hmm. other part of me is just like, we have been in a pandemic for a year and a half. People are like, everybody is pulling conspiracy theories out of anything they possibly can to make themselves more entertained. That's and true. all these coincidences. And, and I, I don't know. I'm just going to wait and see. I mm-hmm. I have no no dog in the game or however you call that. I just yeah. If I'm it gonna, is, it is. I'm gonna have to send you. I'm gonna have to send you the YouTube video I found of the the guy like literally this guy. He's explaining like the whole thing, uh, and 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 why he thinks it is Silent Hill because it's it's a I, hilarious watch and it's just it's very convincing. At least for me, it was very convincing. <laughs> I, I will say because we did a story on it oh, freaking forever ago. I don't even remember how long ago, but like we know that could that Konami ha- is outsourcing Silent Hill games to uh, to studios. They did scout people out such as um, Supermassive Games, which has done the uh, until which did until dawn. They they're doing the um, Fuck, what's it called? Cool. Uh, Dark Pictures Anthology Games. Like they, they tried shopping it to them. Upper Konami kind of like didn't let that deal go through for whatever reason and whatnot. Um, but yeah, so I, I fully anticipate Silent Hill is going to make a resurgence at some point. Whether or not it's going to be Kojima, we'll have to wait and see. Yeah, um, I mean, I, they, I would, it's it's known that they are working on two Silent Hill games. Yeah. Um. So it's just a matter of time. Whether it be we find out on Tuesday. Or a, a year or two from now, who knows? I know. I, I'll I'll put it this way because Kenny and Plug is kind of going off the same vibe. 
Um, I really love the Metal Gear series. I love everything Kojima did with it. Is wacky as shit got. Um, but like the last game by Kojima that I was like, this is like an all around great game. There's like no glaring flaws with it. I would say is probably Metal Gear Solid Three. Four mm. is is a lot of cutscenes. Five notoriously barely has an ending. The story even like kind of strewn throughout is like bar- is like, pretty non existent. And I'm I'm just generally kind of not a fan of of Death Stranding and and most apartments. Um, I know a lot of people <laughs> did enjoy it, and like I'm I'm glad people enjoy things I don't like. I'm I'm not gonna sit here and be like I don't like it, so fuck everyone who likes shit I don't. Um, that's that's not my style. Um, <laughs> but um, yeah, I, I would like to see what Kojima would do with a Silent Hill. But I I like ideally, I think the team I would love to see do Silent Hill would either be, uh whatever capcom development team does the resident evil games or hand it off to super massive but we know that's not going to happen so yeah no i I mean honestly yeah i same like honestly if they if kunami was smart and they would just swallow their freaking pride uh and just give their i give at least the ip of silent hill to to uh capcom i think they would probably do like do pretty well with it um, I don't, th- I don't think they would, I don't think knowing full well, I think, I don't think they would be like looking to make it a resident evil clone. I think like, uh, they actually listen to their fan base. So that's something. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Every, everyone's going to get excited for Kojima's silent Hill. Mm-hmm. And then it's, there's going to be like three hour cut scenes where you learn about the history of silent Hill, man. Mm-hmm. And everyone is going to regret the decisions. Yeah. But it'll be fucking beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's um let's go ahead and move on to the next one. This one's going to be um the rest of these are kind of like mostly in order and whatnot. These are kind of like some of the smaller stuff. We went over the went over the big stuff. Uh Life is Strange, the remastered collections coming to Switch as well as True Colors. Um very excited for True Colors. I'm not sure if I'll be playing it on the Switch, but a uh, little mini rant about this. Um, so I, I understand that Life is Strange 2, um, I don't know if it's 4K, 60, whatever, but like obviously as a sequel, it runs a little bit better, looks a little bit better than the original games. But it's very odd to me that the remastered collection for, um, for Life is Strange only has the first game and before the storm... And they're getting like improved visuals. They're getting new animations, um, facial capture, and whatnot. To uh, I don't know if it's even bringing it up to par as much as like just make it better across the board. Mm. Um, but like, I, it it kind of actively annoys me that they're not giving two that same treatment. So to to make it also better with improved visuals, and uh, I'm just like man it's life is strange to really hit a very specific chord with me growing up as mm-hmm. um of a, a, a child of an immigrant and just like p- people and we talked about it i believe last time um last show just like i think a lot of people need to play life is strange too because it's just like yes this is what it's like growing up as a minority in uh in american like it may seem cartoonish when you have a big angry white dude going you i don't I don't even remember exactly the stuff, but like it, it's kind of cartoonish in the way that they approach you with racism. But it's like at the end of the day, I'm just like, yes, it might seem cartoonish, and unrealistic, but that's exactly how that shit goes down. There, there's a wide spectrum of racism that mm-hmm. uh, that people can face, especially from my background. Um, the the way the way that what was I going to say? Uh, it was like the way that I that I understood is that um, it it does suck but at the same time i think for looking from like a fiscal perspective uh life is strange 2 is the newest of bef- before the recent one it's the newest one of the series and i think that life is strange before the storm and life is strange the, the first season is is old enough to 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 need a to need a proper remaster and also like they're not losing as much money if they were to include life is strange Two in that bundle. Um, yeah, like I there's think- no, there's no doubt in my mind that at some point down the road, they're going to have a life is strange, like collection, like box set. Mm-hmm. Um, 
like, like that's why it kind of like cooled down on over the last day because like when me and mesa were talking about it um i think it was yesterday or the day before that i was just like damn people really care more about blue haired girl being a really shitty friend to you than they do about a mexican kid going facing a lot of racism that's kind of fucked up mm-hmm. um but yeah I, I i can see the the financial reasons and whatnot it, it just feels weird to have it labeled as the collection and then you know you have the protagonist from life is strange hanging out with uh the new protagonist from three i'm just like oh yeah i guess fuck my boy sean we can only have one minority on the screen at a time i guess yeah i see i can see that point that's that's shitty that's yeah that's real yeah. shitty either way play life is strange it's a good series yeah uh, play it play, play even, all of them even though the advertises even though the advertises advertisers jesus christ i can't talk um <laughs> boy life sure is strange huh Corey? yeah <laughs> No, I was gonna say, even though the advertisers uh, and and uh, planners of the collections aren't necessarily thinking of the social aspect of it, but more of the fiscal aspect of it. So, oh, also- and that's the thing, and that's the thing they like to tote around, like, oh, it wasn't personal; it's just about our bottom line. Oopsie! E- like, yeah, and e- even that, like, optically, isn't. A great look um like mm-hmm. i can see why they didn't put me tell tell me why even though tell me why is fucking great because it's literally a different name oh yeah it's um, not part of the the universe so yeah and any thoughts on uh life is strange or tell me why atma uh i haven't played them so i they, they're another on my list of things that i need to play uh i i, I really want to get to two uh more than one i i actually i oh i okay i take it back i played like the first couple episodes of one and like it was just okay mm-hmm. i i it didn't it didn't hit me the same way uh it did a lot of other people but i do want to try to and tell me why as well because i think they will be a little more uh what i'll be interested in and like mm. things stories i want to see told yeah I, and I will say this, uh, Life is Strange 2 has like six different endings. Yeah, I, I got... It's insane. <laughs> they're all kind of sad in their own different way, but I got to really... I, there, there I is like to... one, There's one, there's one that's just like ultimate happiness. Like, it is still kind of sad, but like there's an ultimate happy one, you know? Is it the one where you... I don't say anything. Atma hasn't played it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm trying to think of a way to say it like super vague. We'll talk about it later, Jose. <laughs> <laughs> okay, That's you can good. talk about it. My earphones are out. Oh my gosh. Go, go, Jose. What? You what know you when the say? aliens invade? And- <laughs> oh, yes, the aliens. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're good up. All right, put it back in. Put it back in. <laughs> You're fine. Okay. <laughs> All right. Oh my gosh. Jesus Christ. I love you, Corey. You're, you're I love beautiful. you too. <laughs> you're a beautiful individual. Um, Guardians of the Galaxy is also coming to the Switch, albeit mm. it's um, it's only going to be streaming. It's not you're not going to be able to play it natively. And apparently, uh, sw- Switch streaming games aren't necessarily a great way to do it, even just compared to like normal streaming. And then, I, I guess you can get like a third party Ethernet adapter, but like natively. You're not going to be able to have like a direct input to um to your router or whatever. So even with that on top of that, it's also kind of a worse deal. Because why come out with a better console when you can just make convoluted ways of people to do it themselves? <laughs> I, 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 I think it just like basically comes out. If you have like any other way to play this, just do that. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. Has, has like, I know they did this for Hitman 3 and Control. Like... Has there been any sort of feedback on whether it was actually worth it to even do that? Or I honestly don't think most people who bothered to even give the feedback. Because yeah. I think Resident Evil 7 was like one of the first ones they did. I could be wrong, but yeah, I, I wouldn't. I personally wouldn't bother. Just, just play it on like anything I, else. I didn't, I didn't even know there was Switch streaming. I, I was unaware. Yeah, <laughs> yeah you've learned. You're more knowledgeable. Mm-hmm. If you if you gain enough knowledge, you can convert them into fuel units, and then it, you can get it, Lamborghinis in the Hollywood Hills, Corey. I just I the when I think of Nintendo Switch, I don't think of games like Control or like Resident Evil or Doom Eternal. Like I think of like Mario games or like 
you know, uh, in like indie platformer games or like management games or, you know, simplistic, relaxing games, you know, it's just. I mean, you can't think, play XCOM on there. There's nothing stress, stress free about that. No, true. But <laughs> Although apparently, from what I understand, it's still better to play XCOM other places. And this is coming yeah. from a person who loves XCOM, like just get it on PS4 or Steam or something. I'll mm-hmm. tell you what, next time I play XCOM, I'm going to name it after I'm going to name the soldiers after all the hosts. We'll see who who makes it, who doesn't. Oh, no. Last time I did it, I got my brother killed. Just, I, I didn't realize cars can explode. Uh, maybe <laughs> move them away from there. <laughs> it didn't go so Rookie well. mistake. It's OK. You'll learn. Yeah. Oh, you know what? Maybe I might have to stream that candy. Maybe they'll, they'll, they'll be the next one. Mm-hmm. Um, dude, what else is on here? Oh, I'm actually a little bit excited for this one. Uh, Mario Party Superstars. So it's basically like a culmination of a lot of oh, the, yeah. uh, the, the top 100 mini games, and it's kind of like emphasizing those N64 ones. It's supposed to have like five maps from the N64 era, and yeah, they they had some really good mini games even like back in the day, and now they just look better, plays better, and you can actually play it online with people. You don't have to be local. It would have been nice to have that in the middle of the pandemic versus the tail end. You're right, but, exactly. But fuck it, I'll take it. Um, yeah, you can tell that's why they added it to the to the last one because they were getting ready to release this one with the online code, and they're like, "Hey, we can actually put it into the one that's already out." Mm-hmm. Wait, so are they adding? Wait, are they adding this? Is this like an add-on for S- Super Mario Party, or is it a completely different game? I thought it was a completely different game. Yes, um, yeah. Super Mario Party. Um, the what is it? The tenth? I don't even know how many Mario Parties they've had. So the one that was on Switch that came out a while yeah. ago, that's its own thing. They, they, I believe they retroactively added online multiplayer to that just recently. This one is called Mario Party Superstars, not to be confused with Mario Super Mario Party. It's the same fucking name. <laughs> yeah. So, um, so, Mar- but this Mario Party Superstars already is going to come with o- online play. Yes. Yeah. See, that's great. And then also, it's like classic boards, classic mini games, like throughout the series. Like, it's just. Yeah, like I agree with Canty Unplugged is like literally Super Mario Party was it was fun in like the regular party mode, but it was very weak. Like in all of the other modes that it had, it was just a very weak game. Um, but I mean, it was fun for what it was. I just yeah, it's it's a good party game. It's going to be good. Oh, you know what? We we got to stream it like as a group, like four people or whatnot, we'll make a drinking game out of it. We're gonna lose our friendships. Are gonna deteriorate so. <laughs> I already have. Quick. A, I already have a drinking game from growing from. Well, not growing up. Growing up when I, when I, tur- when I up. turned when I turned twenty one. <laughs> I I, my, I only ever. I never drank before I was twenty one ever. Not one sip of alcohol. Damn, you were you were a dope six year old <laughs> chugging <laughs> chugging forties left and right. <laughs> Um, can't f- no, you can't but, feel the pain of that spinning analog stick in the first game if you're wasted. <laughs> right uh no so basically if you land on a bowser square uh you you have to take a shot if you lose a mini game like if you are the last person in the mini game you have to take a shot um i think there's a kill me (laughs) isn't there like isn't there like a bare minimum of like 15 mini games per per match or something that's a lot of I, shots if someone's no, doing real like, bad. You, 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 like you have to come in fourth. Like you have to come in dead last to have to take a shot. So whoever comes in dead last the most obviously is going to be getting shit faced. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so just like get good, I guess. I don't know. Welcome to Dark Souls of drinking. <laughs> I'm going to get like a big bottle of vodka, fill it with water and say yeah. I'm drinking it. Wow. <laughs> Wow, Anna. life hacks I, right I, here, wow. Co- Corey. I, you're trying to kill us. <laughs> we could change it to just taking a swig of whatever we're at, drinking. At, we'll Mario Party aside, how, how many shots can you pack away? Like, I'm normally. not even. I, dude, I'm 30 now. Okay, I'm not. I'm not even gonna try that shit. Okay. Oh, but you have, want us to? <laughs> he, he's just so <laughs> confident in his Mario Party skills. He knows it's not gonna be him that's getting shit faced. Not a single drop of liquor will be hitting Corey's mouth. <laughs> 
I don't understand what you mean because like literally it's a luck of the dice. Like, what do you mean? Some like- of those games <laughs> take some school. <laughs> I, that's true. I, I if shit you get you items, not. if you get items, you have to like use them strategically. I, so I, I shit you not. There, there's a friend of a friend that we would play Mario Party at um uh, at my at my buddy's house, and just like this dude was like legitimately fucking MLG at Mario Party. He did not lose a single fucking mini game. He was on fucking point. I'm just like this, this guy's on another, another level. If they if they have uh what's it called? It, if they have like an Evo equivalent for Mario Party, this this dude would be reigning champ all day every day i would love i would love to do like a mario party tournament with this new mario party game coming out i would love to do that and stream it i'm telling you we have to do that drunk stream we can have cameras in each corner everyone getting (laughs) wasted it's gonna be a good time (laughs) yes exactly we'll have we'll have four webcams uh one webcam each on uh on each person and then like you know it'll be great (laughs) we're gonna get to like the 18th turn and like two cameras are going to be normal and then one's going to be like pointed down on the ground and someone's just going to be like lying on the ground i'm, like, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna slowly rotate <laughs> yep oh geez that's, i'm, that's I, I'm actually very excited for this it's it's gonna be dope <laughs> uh they also uh, announced uh warrior get it together it's a, another collection of uh, new micro games and it's uh gonna have co-op uh it looks super silly i've never i've never played a warrior where warrior wear in my life but i had friends who did and they always just seemed like very um just you know like just like a like a like a goofy game you know mm-hmm. they're, they're, <laughs> so. they're very fun they're very frantic like each micro game is like literally like five seconds or less and like mm-hmm. as, as you as you keep advancing through them, the timer gets shorter and shorter and shorter. And oh jeez! I, I played the hell out of um out of the DS one. It, it's a it's a freaking good time. Mm-hmm. Um, I might only, I might pick this one up. I might pick it up. The only time I've played WarioWare is when I've played it in Smash Brothers on like the WarioWare stage that includes the mini games. Uh, yeah, mm-hmm. it, it's same idea. Maybe, maybe mm-hmm. less punching of each other. Mm-hmm. <laughs> It's, well, it's co-op. This one's like competitive co-op, so maybe mm-hmm. there is more punching. Oh, there you go. Just just punching other people. <laughs> um, speaking of speaking of upcoming Nintendo games, I it, I guess I'll 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 uh, take it take the reins here. Is anybody actually going to or looking forward to Mario Golf? Um, golf's not really my thing. Yeah. Yeah, no, no. I, I like I like Mario versions of of game of like genres I don't necessarily care for. Like I'm not much of a driving game person, but I'll mm-hmm. play like I'll play Mario Kart. I'll play Crash Team Racing. Otherwise but, known but, as the superior Mario Kart. But but Jose, there's a mode that you can like attack each other and like race to the hole and get your get your ball in as fast as possible. It's high speed and actioning. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, well, you know what? I, I'm glad that that Mario Golf is embracing what normal hockey is, where you just beat the shit out of each other. Right. Um, <laughs> so I'm on the fence about this Mario Golf game because I remember having Mario Golf for the N64 as a kid, and I actually really liked playing that game. However, I never actually was able to unlock even the first character, which is Luigi. Wow. I was never able to unlock him it, because it was so god awful hard. I don't know why, but that game was so hard. It's how, just <laughs> how have they never made a spin off game of Happy Gilmore? That's a good question. That's a good question. <laughs> I, I would pay an ungodly amount of money for that. <laughs> Just a golf game of him playing of, of like a happy Gilmore. Oh my gosh, that'd be great. There's, there's the a way mini things game are going. I was Oops, gonna say the way things are going, you might end up with Happy Gilmore in Fortnite before you get a Happy Gilmore <laughs> game. That's true. That's true. Oh, uh, I mean, we got we got uh, we got Ash from from uh, freaking Evil Dead in in Dead by Daylight before we actually got the uh, Evil Dead game. There so, you go. You know. <laughs> Let's see. Um, Advance Wars One and Two Reboot Camp is coming. It's a collection of, of, I guess, the first two games. I never played Advance Wars back in the day, but it seems cool. Uh, war is good. Uh, kids engaging in war is good. It's it's a good <laughs> education. 
Uh, re- really toughens them up, makes them pull themselves up by their bootstraps, uh, as, as as my good friend Sen uh, Bapiro would say. Uh, uh, ben, ben, Shibibo. Ben, Shibibo. ben Shibibo. Benjamin Shibibo. <laughs> ben Ben Bebop. Ben Bebop. Jeez. <laughs> uh, Jeez. Oh, what ass p word? <laughs> God. Why? Why? <laughs> Um, actually, back in the day, children's soldiers were a commodity that actually helped the economy. Okay, so you're wrong. <laughs> How did yeah. I end up on Joe Rogan's podcast? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'll, I'll, I'll sh- post it aside. I, I, I honestly don't know too much about Advanced Wars, but I hear very good things about it. So maybe I'll check it out. I played Days of Ruin, which is which was like the... I, I can't remember what in the series it was, but like, I think like the first two were sort of like a little more playful, not necessarily playful because it, you know, it's tanks and shooting things and everything, but like a little more cartoony. And then I think days of ruin went with, we're going to have an apocalypse. And it was like a little more gritty or, or whatever. And like the strategy combat in it and everything was sound. I really enjoyed like the actual tactics. I don't remember much else from it. Uh, but getting the reboot and being able to play the originals is exciting for me. I'm looking forward nice. to it. Awesome. Let's yeah. see. What else is here? <laughs> uh, Fatal Frame, Maiden of Blackwater. It's a, I, I thought this was a new Fatal Frame, or is it like a remaster of an older one? I'm not sure. Uh, I think it's a new one. I'm pretty... Because I, I know there was Fatal Frame 1, Fatal Frame 2, Broken Butterfly... Uh, I don't know what, I don't know if there was a third one. I can't remember if there was or what it would be called, but, um, yeah, I think this is a new one. Huh. But, um, yeah, it's good to get some genuine good old Japanese horror. Yeah. Um, I I love the designs. I love the vibes and atmosphere it's given off. Mm -hmm. Um, taking pictures of, uh, of same concepts, same concept. Do you taking pictures of ghosts? Those Great. ghosts don't like being on Snapchat. They're they're boomer ghosts. They don't want anything to do with Snapchat. <laughs> I can't wait to see the ghosts doing TikTok dances. Oh my god! <laughs> it's uh, I thought it was kind of weird that they're showing this as like the debut for where they're kind of first showing this off. Uh, because it's not exclusive to Switch. They had a big splash screen where it's basically coming everywhere. But yeah. um, I don't know. It, it almost kind of feels like on ho- at home on switch especially if like if you're playing in handheld you can like move the camera around that'd be cool yeah right yeah kind of maybe that's why i think nintendo may have bought the the advertising rights for it then because it's like it, it makes sense on the switch mm-hmm. yeah. um i've never played any of the other games but i've always kind of meant to get around to it i know they're not like super widely available Mm-mm. um but so yeah probably picked this up at some point <laughs> Have you played any of them, Atma? No, no, I, I have not. Again, horror, not really. Not big on the spooks? No, not not. Growing up, I'm a little more, I, I'm willing to like try them now, so I may look into this if it turns out to, to review well and, and looks good. Um, but growing up, I, I st- mo- stayed mostly away from horror. I'm a platformer and RPG person. Makes sense. What, what would you say is your cutoff point for for horror? Can like an action game have horror elements? Or oh yeah, like like I love Alan Wake. Um, oh my god, that's so good. Yeah, so good. like oh uh, uh, by, by the way, just real quick. Apparently they're they're remastering that. There is some kind of listing. Ooh, we like to see it. <laughs> but uh, as you're saying, well, all, yeah, uh, all, yeah, yeah uh, Alan Wake, Dead Space. Um, you usually as long as there's like a little more action to it like i i think my limit is like i i played resident evil 2 remake and nearly shit myself the entire time (laughs) so like that's about as far as i can go like i am not a jump scare person i uh back a while ago when you know um he who shall not be named uh was releasing that animatronic game uh that was really popular on youtube um you know what i'm talking about anyway yeah. <laughs> uh i, I tried streaming that 
Yeah, I tried streaming that and literally had to like stop the stream because it almost gave me a panic attack mm-hmm. because of the, the scares and everything and the way that was was made. And so I just that's so that that's about the level. Um, have you, have you played Have you played Resident Evil Three the remake? I have not because I think you would actually really enjoy that one uh, more so than Resident Evil Two, just based on the way you're describing your experiences. Because Resident Evil Three is way more fast paced and 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 act and like way more actiony. Um, yeah, to- tonally, it, it's it's definitely uh, further set aside from Resident Evil Two's kind of approach, where you're just like you pop in a room and suddenly there's a liquor in there and it's jumping at you. <laughs> Um, like, don't get me wrong. Don't get me wrong. Nemesis is scary as shit and chases you around Raccoon City, but mm-hmm. still, like, it, it's just way more faster paced. And you're like, you actually have a dodge mechanic uh, in in Resident Evil Three. Yeah, um, yeah I, I might actually try it. Uh, Resident Evil Four was actually the first Resident Evil I ever played. So, like, yeah. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> there you go. You started off good. I will not be dabbing. <laughs> Uh, um let's see dragon ball z kakarot's also coming to switch i guess it has uh some dlc with it that's already been released that's that's cool i know mesa was here he'd be going off he's he's a big old dragon ball z stan i i love dragon ball z don't get me wrong like i love 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 dragon ball z i have seen dragon ball z so many times over and over again and I've played freaking Dragon Ball Z Budokai and Tenkaichi and all those stuff, like when they came out for like the PS2. Um, huge. And I, I think I played Xenoverse 1 as well. But I think now I've just played... Hello, Kitty. Um, <laughs> I've just played so many different uh, Dragon Ball Z games that I literally, um, you know, I, 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 I literally have seen the story over and over again at this point. Also, I'm having serious deja vu right now. <laughs> I appreciate the Mona on screen. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Okay, okay, Matt. Go. Out. Oh, out. oh, no club. Oh, there we go. Safe. I don't have. I don't have. I don't. Oh, wait. No, I do have cat. Hold wait, on. You should just bring Ish. Have him climb over your shoulder. There, there is cat on chair. Oh, cat. Wait, is that an actual cat? It is an actual cat. Are you cat sitting now? Uh, technically, that- it's our, technically, it's our roommate's cat. Because they adopted oh. it. Yeah. Oh, nice. We has there's cat now. There's a cool cat corner right here. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I think I've maybe fallen out of love a little bit with, with Dragon Ball, where I'm just like, I really loved it growing up because they're just like, yeah, big old muscle dudes fucking punching each other. It's fucking cool. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I, I mean, I still enjoy it, but I haven't really kept up with Super or anything. Um, maybe, maybe I'll check it out if I get it like on a decent sale or something. But like, yeah. given the size of my collection at the moment, I'm just like, eh, it's kind of. It's just like it's one of those things. Like I've experienced this story so many times in the past already. I don't have any uh, yearning to experience it all over again. You know? I I admire their ability to make fifty plus games out of the same story so many times. Mm-hmm. That that is an artistic talent right there. Yep. Be able to, to do that that many times. Uh, let's see. Uh, Super Monkey Ball Banana Mania. I guess it's 300 recreated stages from the original three Super Monkey Ball games, and it has 12 mini games. Um, I only had one Monkey Ball game growing up. It was one of the ones on GameCube. It was fucking hard, and then I didn't <laughs> like it because it was super hard. I'm just like, it's funny monkeys. Why? Why can't funny monkeys just be chill? And no, they were not chill. The only funny monkey game I liked growing up was Ape Escape. That is a funny monkey game. <laughs> <laughs> and any love for the monkeys in the ball variety, Atma? Nope. I I haven't played them. Uh another thing. Um, my my funny monkeys were all Kong related. So were they, were they funky whatsoever? They they were <laughs> funky, they were chunky, they were tiny, they were lanky. <laughs> <laughs> Ramanomad nomad yeah. says monkey ball is pain monkey ball is life <laughs> yeah. oh my gosh that sounds like that sounds like freaking uh i can't think of it right now gosh dang it it it, it sounds bad, <laughs> it sounds bad. <laughs> um let's see they announced should- oh, oh sorry okay. stockholm syndrome thank you there, there we you go, go. There you go. <laughs> um, 
They announced Shin Megami Tensei 5. It's coming out November 12th, 2021. Right. So, That's the one I wanted to talk about. Yes. Um, so, so <laughs> uh, At least from like my perspective, I haven't touched any of the Shin Megami Tensei. I literally started with Persona 4 Golden, went back to 3, 5, Persona 5 Royal. I haven't gone... Persona 1 and 2 don't exist. Let's just be real. Started with 3. Um, <laughs> yeah. But um, I, I was talking to Mesa and I believe uh, Nexus about this uh, the other day. Where I'm just like, hey, maybe I'll jump in with this one. And like, it's... Maybe this is just stealing it too much, but it's basically Persona without the slice of life segments. It's much harder emphasis on gameplay, and it's a good time, but very hard. You got to focus on buffing and debuff, and you can't do this Pokemon shit where you pick four attack moves. You you got to buff, you got to debuff. It's very central to that gameplay loop. But Atma, you seem like the expert here, so good. <laughs> yeah, I I so. I've played um, a lot of Shin Megami Tensei games. I, I played Nocturne. I put a hundred oh, over a hundred hours into Shin Megami Tensei Four. I put a whole bunch of hours into Apocalypse. Uh, I've played Devil Survivor. I've have Devil Summoner. I I have the Digital Devil Saga. I never got around to playing them though. But like I am huge Shin Megami Tensei nerd, and so Five is super exciting for me. Um, and yeah, it, it's Persona without dating, without all the school stuff and everything. It there, it is still like often very narrative focused. There is definitely story involved. Um, it's and there are like choices to be made and everything, but there's none of those pesky social links because usually there's an apocalypse happening, so you don't really have time to you know go out to restaurants and eat. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta get your priorities straight right if you, yeah. if you can't spend half your time playing the game with your fbi agent putting you on a, the sex offender list Wait. why would you even play <laughs> atma, what do you atma what do you mean like in in majora's mask you could you could totally do that and you just go back in time and you're fine and the moon doesn't fall like. you know what yeah. link is a bad person just like yoshi uh, Link commits tax fraud. He cheats the bank system so bad. <laughs> it doesn't. It doesn't even make sense because, like, like let's say day three, you have like nine hundred rupees, and then you time travel back to day one, and somehow they still have a record of your nine hundred. It doesn't fucking make sense. It's tax fraud. Tax fraud doesn't make sense. <laughs> um, uh, anyway, Shin Megami, go ahead. Uh, um, and it, it's it's fun. It's like Pokemon. Uh, it is the the battle system is very much you have like demons that you uh put in your uh party and unlike pokemon like instead of like breeding pokemon you fuse your demons and make new demons uh and yeah it's all about getting good debuffs and the right uh elements um most Shin Megami Tensei games use what is called the press turn system i don't know if 5 uh is using it because as soon as i saw the release date i just was like okay i've seen enough i don't need to watch anything else um so i'm just going in blind because i already know i'm buying it so i don't need to to know anything else uh but the press turn is basically like if you use the right element against the enemy you get an extra action and if you chain a bunch of actions together, you can like do a whole bunch of damage in one turn because everyone's getting like two or three actions a turn to buff and debuff and attack and all that sort of stuff. And it's very like heavily gameplay focused. And it's really the the Shin Megami Tensei series was a series that made me learn to use buffs and debuffs and like every other rpg because usually it's just does this cost does this cause 9999 damage if it doesn't why am i casting it yeah right so it's uh it is a big person's uh rpg i'm, I'm excited to try it out but uh i don't know i, I don't want to say it's like on the back burner but i just i just have a bunch of stuff to get to uh, I'll probably dump five more Persona 5 Royal playthroughs in. Or get <laughs> you know what? No joke. I actually have uh, Persona 5 Strikers right here. That uh, It is open. It is installed on my PS5. I just haven't pressed the play button. But It is very good. I, I played through that as well. Very nice. good. Very good. 
I, at first I was kind of worried because it's a, it's a Musou game. It's uh, I don't necessarily want to say the word brain dead, but it's kind of like a, a numbing, just like go around, beat people up in an arena. But from what I've heard, it actually handles it pretty well. So yeah, it, it, it turns it way more into an action RPG and less of a Musou game. Like there is a lot more of like strategically, using abilities and everything especially because like when you pull up magic menus and everything gameplay pauses Mm -hmm. so you can like sort of choose what your next move is and everything and so it's a lot less just button mashy that's cool you know i'm actually noticing looking at the case i didn't notice this before um they have every line in here on the box in spanish also is odd but cool (laughs) they usually i thought they usually have that Let's see. Let me grab a random case. Let me let me compare. <laughs> Another Japanese game, uh, Kingdom Hearts, uh, 1.5, 2.5. This is actually my girlfriend's copy. No, no uh, Spanish on here. Sora is a racist little fuck, I guess. Oh, <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> Zero to a hundred. Zero to a hundred. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus Christ. He no Spanish the power on the friend- back of the case. Racist. The Just- power of friendship <laughs> for me and my people. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Oh, my God. This is why he's not in Smash, Ken, he says. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Oh, fuck. Where the fuck um, are we? We were talking to Shibigami. Uh, oh. Danganronpa, I guess. Yes, the best yeah. game in the world is coming to <laughs> Switch, and it's um, fuck, where am I on the on my time codes? I wasn't paying attention. Uh, one, wait, no shit, wrong key. I don't know how to type right now. Uh, yeah, they announced Danganronpa is coming to the Switch. It's a collection of four games. It is Danganronpa one, two, V three. Danganronpa three is a very different thing. Um, I wish more people would play Danganronpa V three so I could explain that in greater detail because i don't want to spoil it but i can't nod hard enough it's so dumb in the smartest way possible that that specific thing am i am i am i thinking of the wrong game isn't danganronpa where you're like rolling around with a giant ball and like you're collecting things is that rolling around at the speed of sound in a ball that that's sonic no, like where you're pushing a ball. You're talking talking about Katamari Damacy. Never mind. I was thinking of the wrong game. Katamari is completely different than Danganronpa. You, you, you can also consider that <laughs> Super Monkey Ball. You, you're in a ball rolling around. True. Maybe not the speed of sound, but you know. <laughs> but yeah. <it's>, I, uh... <laughs> honestly, I think I think the only JRPG or or like the the only like. Japanese style games that I could get into was obviously Kingdom Hearts uh, and um, freaking uh, Tales of the Abyss back in the day uh, and also tale- Tales of Berseria, I believe I played. Uh, mm-hmm. And then the new Tales game is coming out, which is, I think, Tales Arise or mm-hmm. Tales of Arise or something like that. I might check it out. We'll see. Well, for what it's worth, Corey, uh, Danganronpa is not a JRPG, which means it's not for nerds. It, it is a visual novel detective uh, Phoenix Wright like game, so it means it's only for chats. Oh, uh, okay. Never mind. I, I wasn't into those either. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, it's all good, but yeah, it's uh, 1, 2, V3, and uh, I guess it's called S Ultimate uh, Summer Camp, which all, all the Danganronpa games, they have these weird little post games where you can this little mini game so you can grind out uh, getting these these conversations for characters because you will not have the time to get them in uh, in the base game because people have a tendency to be allergic to death. Um, so might not be able to finish talking to someone if they die pretty early on. Mm-hmm. Um, and by might, I mean, they definitely will. Um, oh, yeah. Thank you. It was Danganronpa at the moment is available on PC, uh, PlayStation or tech or ps4 and uh psp slash vita but i would highly recommend ding to everyone even if visual novels aren't necessarily your thing they weren't necessarily my thing before um it's a good mystery mur- murder story it's very wacky it goes places i really wish people would play v3 because there's not enough people out there to talk to you about it and Atma, you and me gotta have a 
We, we got to get people playing that. We got to have a spoiler cast. For yeah, some, we have to talk about V3. But I'm, I'm also, talk- 2 has one of the best characters in gaming of all time. Oh, so. yes. Are, are you talking? We, we can say name Nagito. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, there we go. We we need to convince more people to, to, to play it so we can have a spoiler cast. Because oh, even that name. Uh, <laughs> you know, I, I don't think Blaine's listening right now. Um, I I put up a very out of context spoiler thing. Like no one could have realistically known where it was coming from. I did it in just like the the description. Don't spoil. I I will not spoil it. But the description I did was so outlandish. No one could possibly have guessed where it comes from. And people just need to play Ding and Rampa. That's all I'll say. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's so beautiful. So uh, I know that Sarah would kill me if I didn't uh, read off her notes for um, Final Fantasy Origins. Oh, we have uh, we have one more real quick. OK. Um, and the, I know I know Kyle would, would murder me if I did not bring this up. Uh, I almost, Why did I almost say Kevin? It's Kyle. <laughs> Kevin, Kyle. I'll call them both. Um, Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 1 and 2 coming to Switch. People love Tony Hawk. Uh, CJ, if you're still listening. I, I know you're in love with Tony Hawk. There we go. Tony See, Hawk is really fun. I have it on my PlayStation 4. I, I, well, you may have Tony Hawk on your PlayStation 4. I have Tony Hawk in my soul. Oh, do you? Yes. I don't even <laughs> know what Tony Hawk looks like. So I, <laughs> I believe CJ at one point <laughs> said Tony Hawk is like on the, on the list of top 10 white people to ever exist. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny because people in real life literally will run into tony hawk and and say hey you know who you look like you look like that tony hawk guy and and he just like literally he's so funny he he literally just rolls like he's like huh that's weird <laughs> you know <laughs> or so, you know or something like that and because he's like he's just done telling people like i yeah. I, I really am because he's told people straight to their face like oh yeah i i am tony hawk and and they're like no, you're not. No. <laughs> it, is no, it weird not. that my immediate visual image of Tony Hawk is old Tony Hawk? I don't even remember what young Tony Hawk looks like. I don't either. I don't. He just, I mean, he looks the same. I imagine just more wrinkles. That's pretty much it. Like yeah. he, he's, he comes off as a chill dude. I, I would love to meet him. Kyle. It, I almost said Kevin again. Kyle has met Tony Hawk. I'm very envious of that. Don't know about <laughs> his brother, Mike, though. Yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah. Let's go into the uh, new releases and whatnot. Um, you want to go in and start off with Final Fantasy Origins? I, I yes. guess if you want to start off with Sarah's notes, since she is. Yeah. Here. Well, I don't. I don't have any opinions myself with Origins, so I'm just going to read from her. So this is what she says. She says, well, "Hello, I'm surprised everyone. you haven't touched it." What? I'm surprised you haven't touched it. I thought you'd be all over it. Uh, I'm just not a huge Final Fantasy person. I mean, I loved Final Fantasy 15 um you can stop there yeah (laughs) (laughs) i'm just talking shit it's all good um so anyways this is what sarah has to say hello everyone Corey is being lovely and one of the best beans and is delivering my thoughts on the final fantasy origins demo first of all do not sit this one out origins is a gameplay mixture of final fantasy 15 and a souls game while it is still incredibly earlier Uh, It is fun and challenging in in the right way. From seamless talent tree switching with the triangle button, a guard that is incredibly interesting, guarding certain attacks lets you use them against the enemy, Um, and big dudes with giant swords. Uh, Obviously, the game still needs work, but my my favorite addition, a difficulty feature. Yes, Origins is a Souls game with a difficulty option. If you pick easy, you also have the ability to turn on casual, which means you die. If you die, you don't lose MP gained. I don't want to make this long, but I do want to say I cannot wait to see where Origins goes. Uh, We know I do actually find the character designs interesting. And yes, I say that ready to start chaos. Uh, Love, Sarah. (laughs) Um, her I, description right there, I completely forgot because I had read over it earlier and I completely forgot that she had said that it was basically Final Fantasy 15 with a, uh, mixed with a Souls game. And I might just go play that demo tonight. 
I, you know, I be fortunate. Out. <laughs> be fortunate that you can play the demo because when they released it, I, I don't know how they didn't double check this like on on their end. Just like when they, when they released the demo, it was corrupted. No one could fucking play it. Oh, it was it was it was pretty dumb. But overall, um, man, I, I I love Final Fantasy as a series. Like the majority of them that I played, I love them. But this this just looks like such a weird mishmash, not even like in the Kingdom Hearts style. Um, mm-hmm. So I, I would say like I, I haven't played it yet. From what I've seen from the trailers, it plays uh, like 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 a slower beat 'em up with some like God of, like classic God of War finishing moves. Um, the, a dude named Jack, just like totally out of the blue and in like regular people clothes, just like I'm gonna kill Chaos. Chaos, have you heard of Chaos? I'm gonna fucking kill him. Um, <laughs> Uh, yeah, his guy, his guy like strolled out of an old navy store and it's like, all right, <laughs> time to go fuck someone up. Yeah. Uh, uh, so I, is I, this is this supposed to be the like Final Fantasy one remake or something? So all right, I'll I'll, I'll jump in here. Mm-hmm. Uh, apparent. So like, it's supposed to take place before Final Fantasy one. Like that, I think is the timeline. Is this is occurring before the actual first game? Mm-hmm. But then like. From what I I haven't actually played the original Final Fantasy, but from what I understand, there's like time travel involved in the first game, so there might be something involved in this one too. There's always but, time travel. <laughs> yeah, it's always time travel. Wait, what is weird, I, I, from, from what I've heard, Final Fantasy one like barely has a story up until the end. Yeah, it, it, it's. I think I, I don't even think Final Fantasy one has like characters per se like i think you start with like four job classes and can name them whatever you want and i don't think there's like actual protagonists uh, huh. if i remember correctly i think because like in Dissidia, i'm pretty sure like the uh representatives from final fantasy one is like knight or white mage or something like that yeah uh, like final the I, I imagine back then when when the first final fantasy came out it was more derivative of like uh replicating sort of a video game version of what dungeons and dragons was trying to do um yeah so i mean honestly at the end of the day like i i know i kind of rib on 15 in particular even though i played it like three times i'm like why don't i like this game let me give it a fair shot they played it three times to completion i hate myself you didn't like boy you didn't like boy band simulator i (laughs) (laughs) i'll put it this way i enjoyed the character interactions the overarching story i wasn't a fan of there was a lot of logical jumps in that story just like why is the empire not chasing you why are they letting you get like like the story just doesn't functionally work the open world's pretty empty the side quests are kind of whatever but like even just the combat i'm just like okay i'm gonna what was it you hold circle to attack and occasionally do some other moves mm-hmm. crafting magic was kind of a pain so if, if it plays more like seven remake fuck yes i love seven remakes combat I, I'm, I'm all for it but um yeah. I think I'm I think I'm with you right there. Like, don't make magic overly complicated. Just give me an MP bar and give me spells like that's all I yeah. need. Because like, like in 15, what you'd have to do, you'd have to pause the game, go into your menu. You, ha- you have to craft the magic because they're treated more like grenades than anything. And yeah. you have to like slowly like hold R1 to increase the amount that you're putting in it if you want like any amount of potency. And I don't know. I, I didn't enjoy 15. But I recognize <laughs> I'm the odd one out, so maybe my my brain is busted. <laughs> but that being said, uh, I ultimately hope that this game is going to be pretty good. It just, I I would say maybe didn't make the fir- best first impression uh, for that many people. Chaos. Yeah, the trailer was bad. Yeah. I'm still going to try the demo though. It's on yeah, my the tra- PS5. The trailer probably wasn't the best. Now I'll give the demo a shot. I just haven't. <laughs> Had time, and by, but when I say I don't, I didn't have time. I've been too busy playing Siege with everybody. <laughs> uh, fun times had. You you would have a great time with it, Corey. Competitive shooter. You die. And you gotta you gotta sit out. Yeah, for five totally. Like first person shooters. I just love like when people jump around and twitch until they can't get fired at. It's just so. I love it. It's great. I, I will say, <laughs> out of anyone's sarcasm, I love yours the most. <laughs> <laughs> He has this beautiful toad dude. 
It's just, it's just, it's like, I like, like, don't get me wrong. There are first person shooter games. I like competitive first person shooters. I'm sorry. If the, if the, if the person that you're trying to shoot is flying around the screen or turning into a building or whatever the hell these other first, these other shooters do, I I'm done. I'm done. I'm like, I can't, I can't. <laughs> and people are like, what's the matter? Just click the person, like just click the person you're trying to kill. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, well, no, it's not easy. <laughs> as Roman, as Roman nomad points out, you're missing out on the best part of gaming. Don't you want to hear, don't you want to deal with team killers and racists? That, that's the best part, Corey. <laughs> yeah, no, thanks. <laughs> Speaking of competitive shooters, can I make a quick, news thing oh mm-hmm. hell yeah go for it uh i i don't i don't know if this was scheduled to be talked about um but they did announce this week the new valorant character the or the new valorant agent Ooh. Um, uh, well, have they announced like what the character's abilities are or anything yeah he got a trailer and everything it's the the character's name is ko which <laughs> it's a robot and it's spelled <laughs> k-a-y backslash zero oh, okay um, uh, but it's it's a robot and i believe he is a duelist uh and his abilities are his main ability is he throws a knife that suppresses the abilities of other characters so like that's his oh, nice. his sort of gimmick is like he will throw this knife out and then it has an area of effect that stops other uh characters from using their ability so he's kind of like dombra esque uh from overwatch but now in uh valorant mm-hmm. um actually sounds he, pretty dope yeah he he looks really neat to play uh i'm sure i'll be terrible with him uh because that's how i play valorant is terribly but it, it looks really cool and he's like it's like kicking off the new the new season of valorant starts this coming tuesday um so he's going to be like the main addition along with a bunch of balanced stuff mm-hmm. we, we got to get back into playing some more valorant I, I, do i have I, it installed i don't know <laughs> shit I, I think i might have uninstalled because like oh, i'm just going to clean up my nope i still have it installed fuck me okay <laughs> <laughs> you can't get out of it no nope. you have to play it with us there, there's no escape <laughs> oh shit um has anyone else here played Final Fantasy VII Intergrade, the, the PS5 upgrade? Okay. I have it downloaded, but I have to finish Ratchet and Clank first. All right. I, I will take over for the Intergrade stuff. Um, so Intergrade is the weird naming convention they're doing for the PS5 upgraded version of Final Fantasy VII Remake. So uh, better resolution, better frame rate. They added textures. That, that door that is supposed to look like a door actually looks like a door now it's just not just this blurry red object where a door is supposed to be (laughs) um so so that's nice uh overall graphically it's it's still not like damn this is a ps5 game it just looks more uh consistent for what you would have expected because there it it does look great like as, as a ps4 game but there's just like small inconsistencies here and there um but with an there's a weird buying system if you buy intergrade as a new game i believe you get the dlc but if you already own the ps4 game you get the free upgrade to the ps5 version but then you have to buy the dlc which is called intermission why they would use intermission and intergrade gets a little confusing why they didn't just call it yuffie's big adventure i don't know but uh the dlc plays yuffie who is a um character from the original final fantasy game they're making some weird plot divergences. This isn't necessarily spoilers. This is just stuff in the trailers. The fact that she's even this early in the game, where in the original, you don't meet her until like the as an optional character, like in the Forest of Junon, which is much later. Um, they mess with her backstory where she's she's uh there like on official business. Her her father's backstory's changed. It's 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 kind of weird how some of these plot divergences that are there in seven remake are happening like such at a background level but yeah it, it's a fun adventure you, you fight some characters from dirge of cerberus uh that we weren't elaborated on back then because it was kind of retconned back in there mm-hmm. um 
I, I like her combat, even though it took me a while to get used to it, because as a DLC, it's like you press the X or square button to attack. Circle is to dodge. But it starts off pretty hard. I'm, I'm not going to lie. Like, I, I have the platinum for Final Fantasy VII Remake. Um, I got pretty damn good at that game. I didn't remember jack shit about that game, about that game loop, about how you're supposed to counter stuff and whatnot. Um, so so it, it was rough going back. And then on top of that, Yuffie has like a very drastically different play style compared to Cloud. She's a lot faster. You can swap to magic and infuse certain elements to it. It's it, it's a bit to adjust to. And honestly, I didn't really get into the swing of it basically up until maybe like an hour before it ended. So maybe a second playthrough would be a lot better for me, but overall, I, I'd say worth the twenty bucks if you're, if you're paying for it separately. But yeah, overall pretty good. It's more Final Fantasy VII remake. Uh, whoever the fuck is directing those uh, the cinematography, whatever you want to call the game equivalent of it, deserves a fucking raise. That shit is so stylistically on point. It is fucking beautiful. It is uh, top tier anime. Uh, yeah, that, that's about it. It's Final Fantasy VII Remake. Yuffie's a cool character. She's a big old dork. It's a nice <laughs> change of pace from Cloud being a moody boy. Also committing tax fraud. Uh, identity theft as well on top of that. that that's twice as bad. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, it's a good time. Especially if you already own it. I'd say go for it. Uh, Atma, you've also been playing Ratchet. Do you want to go ahead and talk about that? Uh, yes. I love it. It is so good. Um, yeah, it, I, uh, so I mentioned this on Twitter, but this is Ratchet has been the first game where I actually noticed visibly, uh, the 60 FPS versus 30 FPS. Um, because it has like the performance mode versus the, I can't remember what they call it, what the visuals where it's either like, really 4k visuals but 30 oh it's frames like per uh second. it's like performance versus versus quality quality or something fidelity or, i think fidelity there it is yeah fidelity, fidelity. yeah mm -hmm. uh, and so like i've been i was playing originally in performance mode for a little bit then i was like i want to see what the how good the graphics get in fidelity and so i switched to that and i could immediately see the difference in the frames per second i was like oh no Oh no, I'm turning into one of the the frames per second people because up until like I could switch back and forth between it at will, I had never been able to tell. Um, but specifically with Ratchet, because they allow you to do that, and I'm sure other PS5 games have that as well. Um, I could immediately tell. And yeah, the 60 frames per second version of Ratchet is super smooth. Uh the graphics are amazing. It definitely takes uh the the ps5 to the next level it's like yeah this is next gen type stuff um i'm You've a little successfully been converted i am happy for that <laughs> you've joined the 60 <laughs> fps family now just yeah. wait if you get super into pc gaming join the 144 fps oh uh, no no i can't say that. <laughs> um as for the, like the actual game itself i love it i've you know ratchet and clank has been one of my favorite series uh i played the ps2 games i've played deadlocked and i even played the stupid spin-offs like full frontal assault and uh the the all for one co-op and all that stuff like i love ratchet and clank and this one is top quality like is high up there it's up there with uh going commando tools of destruction crack in time the best ones of the series uh very good gameplay the guns are fantastic all of them feel good especially with the dual sense controller um i'm a little disappointed that they don't do more with the dimension hopping uh like the when the initial trailer reveal when you like grabbed he grabs the the dimensional hole and like mm -hmm. pulls it forward that look like it looks really cool but it pretty much functions it, as like a really cool looking grappling hook yeah um, it, you're not you're not like going between dimensions you're just like going between two locations i i, so, I will say like in that beginning sequence where you're kind of like going through a whole bunch of dimensions or i believe there's even a um i forget what the arena is on that one i think it's like the third planet you go to or like little location yeah. 
where you're where you're on the uh what's the speedy bug you're on the spitler speedle i think Speed, they call there it. you go yeah you're just going through a bunch of portals you're going through different worlds i'm like oh yeah they're totally just flexing just like look at what we can do with a ps5 F ssd technology and whatnot and it looks yeah. cool yeah it is it, and I'll, when when they do do it it is really cool like there's there's like a couple boss fights where you like fall through dimensions and like fight in different areas and from what i understand the way the developer said like it isn't like they're loading this for the specific boss fight. Like the SSD loads that entire planet when you're on it. You're actually fighting in that world mm -hmm. uh, when they switch between them, and so it's it's really cool. Everything is fast, no loading times. Uh, yeah, it, it's it's a it's a great game on top of being like high quality technology for uh, the PS5. I forgot how addicting it is to even just uh to, to cycle through all the weapons to like level them up to level five and everything i'm just like oh let me do like some weird combinations i can use the weird uh terrarium thing to like basically stun big dudes and i can unload and i can spawn mr fun guys and i can unload with freaking bombs it's you can do some really crazy um I, some really crazy shit i love the ratchet and clank series because of that like I, I know like people love call of duty and battlefield and those like shooters, but like, give me wacky ass guns. Give me the sheepinator. Give me, <laughs> you know, tornado guns and, and buzz blades and like a thing that the topiary cannon that turns everything into grass. Like it's there, there's one of the gun. One of my favorite guns is the, the cold snap. You get it later in the game and you fire this like bomb blast and it turns enemies into ice cubes. And like if they already had momentum, they like slide around the level and it's just so much fun. Uh, I, yeah, anyway, I cannot this, this like Ratchet and Clank and Persona 5 Strikers are right now dueling head to head for like game of the year for me. They're just th those are the top ones. It fight meal. It, uh, what the it fight meal? It might. Yeah, I can't. <laughs> what is English? <laughs> it fight meal like no. It it might feel weird to describe it like this, but um, I swear it's an energy drink. It's not beer. Um, <laughs> um, it it's such like a feel good game where I'm just like, this is just fun to play. It's good vibes. It's I just love it. It is. I'm always happy playing it. I think one minor little gripe i have is on the is on the swamp planet where you have that side quest to get the the fruit or whatever for um a little dinosaur flying thing where it, it puts stuff on the map that you can't necessarily get at that point in time and i i can't stand that shit in games i'm just like if i can't get it don't tell me it's there just just yeah. hide it because I'm just like, because I'm Googling, just like, why why can't I grab this thing? Am I supposed to like fly down to the fruit? Can I shoot it somehow? And then you find out, oh no, you have to get like 45 of the other ones. And then you can get the flame ability that you didn't know was a thing. Yeah, I had the exact same problem. I had to Google it too. I was like, why can't I grab this one? And then, oh, it's because I don't have an ability they never mentioned. Mm -hmm. Like, I, I, I don't care if it breaks complete diegeticness or whatnot if i can't get something just straight up tell me hey dude you can't get this shit I i'm like okay cool thanks you appreciate my time I i'm down for that i yeah i'm good uh what about you Corey? have you touched it all um oh ratchet and clank yes uh no because I, I i honestly didn't really grow up with ratchet and clank and i never i never really had uh a child you know, i never i i never wow okay no i was <laughs> listen listen no i i never played i never played ratchet and clank or uh i think the only games i uh of those kinds like i ever really touched was banjo kazooie and spyro and you know those games basically um i had friends who were into those games i just i don't know it, it, they didn't have golden puzzle pieces and like a, a running bear with a bird in its backpack, so I was fine. <laughs> Stupid motherfucker doesn't even have a bird in his backpack. What kind of punk <laughs> ass is this? <laughs> uh, I, I got you though. Like, you know. uh, I, for, I was just thinking about it the other. Day. I had I had some weird. Oh no, it was it was uh, Jack uh, Jack and Daxter. You know, I I loved Spyro growing up, and I 
I love Spyro more than Crash. Crash, I'm, I'm like, oh, I really like it. I'm not sure I'd say, like, I love the old Crash games. Uh, but when Jack and Daxter came, I'm just like, oh, those are the Crash people. And I'm just like, I don't know. He's not as cool as fucking Spyro. Fuck that guy. <laughs> I'm just like, what, do you, what does he do? He jumps and he spins. Pff, whatever. He yeah. doesn't even spit fire. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's my excuse i was like anytime uh anytime my boyfriend's like crash is better crash is i grew up with crash crash is amazing and i'm like okay but like spyro is a literal dragon who can breathe fire among other uh, other abilities so like i you know what i'll agree i'll agree with candy <laughs> out of all the platformers from that era whether it's mario banjo kazooie crash spyro anything from that era Spyro, I think, is you're, hands down the best design. Because you're a dragon. You're Fuck a dragon. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but which one got a sequel that just came out? We don't know. We don't know. You have to hold your breath. That <laughs> hold your breath. We might get a Spyro 4. You don't know. <laughs> that reignited chili is fucking cool. And um, my girlfriend, she, she got the... Because I played it on PS4. Uh, she has it on Switch. And every time she gets stuck on on um on trying to get something, because she she wants a hundred percent it, even though there's no trophies or whatever on uh on Switch. She's like, here, can you help me? Every time I get the excuse to play more Spire, I'm like, oh fuck yeah, I'm gonna help you. I fucking love I, this game. I I have hundred I have a hundred percented uh Spyro uh Spyro the Dragon um Ripto's Rage, which is my favorite of the series, by the way. Ripto's Rage is is fantastic. Uh, and then um, the third one, I haven't 100%ed yet, but I'm going to go back to it eventually. I will say, I, I would have said two is my favorite for most of my life. I think I kind of enjoy the more simple nature of one nowadays. That's true. Yeah, that's true. And, I the, and that. The three does. <sighs> Three adds a lot of sidekick characters. It kind of does like the Sonic Syndrome stuff mm -hmm. where it's, it's it's never like as good to play as them, even though it adds like a decent amount of variety. But three goes like super overboard. with just like, hey, <sighs> you don't have this fucking power. You can't get this shit. Yeah, um, it, it make three definitely makes you go back, makes you go back and forth a lot. I mean, the first the like the other games did that, too. But like I three think, does it to like the nth degree. I think two had it for some of the some of the for levels some, for some two. of the hub stuff but mm. i don't believe you gained any like abilities or anything in one i think you can do everything you yeah. can like from the get-go i think yeah i think you're right in one you can pretty much 100 percent every level as you go to them mm. <laughs> that fucking treetop level can uh also it's could fuck off though also the the raceway levels uh weren't oh. as difficult they weren't as difficult as i remember them being so i actually didn't have too hard of a time with the raceway levels well that's because we have youtube now you can you can find the optimal path to go or maybe i'm just a better gamer now who knows <laughs> like <laughs> maybe you're just better than me and Atma, i guess what about what about you, Alma? Where, where do you rest on the supreme platformer god? You gonna go with Ratchet? Or no, Ratchet's PS2. Ratchet. We're talking N64 yeah. or PS1 era. Like I, I'm, I'm old school. I Super Mario 64 is is my the height. I know a lot of other things came out and did all sorts of other cool stuff, but Super Mario 64. I've gotten 120 stars more times than I can count uh so also also there's like i've seen speed runs of super mario 64 where you don't have to collect all the stars necessary and it's just like ridiculous it's ridiculous <laughs> uh, i'll be honest whenever i play mario 64 and i and i did it for the uh little collection they did on switch before they cut off mario's head and just on back in march you can't play his, you can't play that game anymore you can't buy mm -hmm. it you can still play it um the way I always treated like getting all the stars in Mario is that I did it and I've never 100% of that game because there's just some stars I don't like doing. So I'll kind of like pick and choose my way through just so I can get to Bowser at the end. Let me, Spyro, I always 100% Spyro. With let me let me ask Atma this question. Um so at the end of Mario 64 when you 100% it like you get all the stars, you unlock Yoshi, right? Yep. And then what? You can't That's it. You can't you don't do anything. Yeah, you can't do anything with Yoshi. You just he shows up at the top of Princess Peach's castle and is like, "Hey, I'm here. Congratulations." That's it. That's not worth it. 
<laughs> I want to at least be able to ride Yoshi around, but like, no. <laughs> you, you can do oh it in Sunshine. It, maybe that's why Sunshine's better. It's true. Even if Yoshi dissolves and dies the second he touches water. Except for the hotel level. The hotel level can burn. Oh, yes. Like, <laughs> And all that, I all I know is that there are like there are literal there's entire levels in Super Sma- in Super Mario 64 that I avoided. I I like literally didn't even I maybe got one star in 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 some of these levels and I just like didn't even go yeah. back to them. And I think one of those levels is the one where it has like the different water levels that you have to keep hitting mm. up and down. Oh, I, I can't level. stand that one. I hate it. And also the one where you have to like, you enter one painting and it's your ginormous and you enter another oh, painting. Yeah. And tiny. I hate that level too. I love that level. That's one of my favorites. <laughs> really? <laughs> really? Yeah. My, one of my favorites is the, is Boo Mansion. Boo Mansion. Yeah. Like that Boo Mansion is fun. I, I hate the fucking eel level. I, the, oh, the that, eels that's terrified me as a kid. And I still haven't got over it. <laughs> the eel, you're like I am traumatized <laughs> by the eel. <laughs> Whenever I think back to like some of those platforms, because when I, I don't think I even beat Galaxy on, on Switch. I, I beat 64. I beat um, I almost said Fun Flower. Fun, yeah, Fun Flower. I, I can't speak. <laughs> uh, Super Mario Fun Flower. Um, Sunshine. Um, like I, there's some good stuff on there, but there's like a lot of bs also or and i'm just like i hate to bring this up i'm just like spyro just consistently like front to back fucking great there's it no is, like yeah. low there, there is no hotel level because like, <laughs> like even with 64 i'm willing to forgive it because you can't just kind of pick and choose what levels you want to do and sunshine you have to get to the point in each level where you beat uh shadow mario so you kind of have there's no way around it yeah that's true yeah uh, I think that's one thing that threw me off about Sunshine was that it's not how many stars you get. It's like how many stars you get in each level that gets you to the end. And I was just like, oh, OK. I'm not but. sure if you've played this one, Atma, but Corey, if you want to get the last topic of uh, Pokemon Snap. Sure. Um, I have not played it. So where, where, oh, where, are, we, where are we at? I love your facial reactions every time I do a stupid joke. <laughs> um, I live for that. That's my aesthetic. <laughs> what? What? Wait. What about Pokemon Snap? Uh, you played Pokemon Snap. No one else has. Like, tell us. Oh, what, oh, what yeah, is, yeah. What is Pokemon Snap? Um, How did you enjoy it? So I haven't beaten it yet, but I recently on stream I I unlocked like three new locations that I didn't have previously, and I haven't actually gone to any of them. But I was super excited when I unlocked the actual like beach level because in the original Pokemon Snap you start on a beach level, and it's just it's just super adorable. Like literally, the game is just adorable. It's just so cute and so fun, and like um. I actually enjoy like I have never played a game that had that literally had photo mode like there's so many games now that have photo mode and it encourages you to like edit them and upload them to your social media and blah blah blah. I haven't wanted to do that with anything else except for Pokemon Snap. And they have like an in-game interface, like online in-game interface where that you just upload it to the Pokemon Snap like the po- the Pokemon Snap like in game web page or whatever, and people can literally rate your rate your uh, your photos like give your photos like cheers or whatever, and it's like super simple, but but it's like adorable because you can put stickers and stuff on it and put frames around it and just add all these different wacky things to it, and uh, I already uploaded like two customized photos of like uh, a a uh, a Dutrio and um. And then also like these, I can't remember what they're called, but they're these like little like pom pom looking Pokemon that were like, they're kind of like going in a row and they're walking along the ground or something. And I, I decorate them to ha- have all little bow ties and little umbrellas <laughs> and it was adorable. Um, so yeah, I'm having a fun time with it. Like it's, it's a nice chill game uh, between horror games on my stream to play. So like basically the way I format my stream is when we always have a horror game we're playing and we always have a cute game we're playing because my whole tagline is 
welcome to my kingdom. We have the cuties and the spookies here. Um, it's a good so, palate cleanser. That's for sure. Yeah. So, and it's also good for palate cleansing. Um, so literally I have like, I'm playing cozy cove or cozy grove right now on my switch as well as Pokemon snap. And I'll like alternate between those. So when cozy I want to play is a horror game. Cozy Grove is not a horror game. <laughs> I'll alter- when it comes to cute games, I'll alternate between those. Um, currently, my horror game I'm playing is Alien Isolation. So Big spookies. But yeah, Pokemon Snap, if you like the nostalgia, if you like discovering new Pokemon, whether you call them GMOs or not, my boyfriend calls them GMOs, uh, you'll enjoy this one. You'll enjoy it. How okay. how freaked out would you be in real life if you like accidentally stepped on a rock and then just like fists exploded out of it and wanted to square up with you? <laughs> I'm not kidding. I would I would I would squeak. <laughs> I would I would I would run because that's not natural. Not I, in I this lo- world. <laughs> I love how Geodude's name is literally Rock Dude. A yeah. Dude of Rock. <laughs> dude of Rock. He's he's, um, the, he's the Rock Dude. What one thing I heard people talking about with this <laughs> new one in in particular was that. Uh, you can't unlock like new levels and stuff, and you, like you kind of have to do repeat runs of the same levels back to back in order to unlock yeah. new stuff. What, did it you is, like that? Was it annoying or? It's not okay. So like it is a little bit grindy, but it's not like as long as you're like actually trying with each run, then then uh you can get through. Like you can discover new places at a at a mm-hmm. decent pace. Um. The game, the game does take a bit to get you introduced to all of the elements of it. Um, but I think I actually kind of like that of it because it actually teaches you to be patient and just enjoy what you have now and not just like go, 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 go and trying to beat the game as fast as possible because it is a game literally meant to be about leisurely going through these areas of Pokemon and capturing the perfect picture like it's not meant to be a speed game you know so i I think that critique is a little is a little harsh and i I can see why i can see why people are like oh it's too grindy but i i think it has the perfect amount of grind if that makes sense uh question about the uh the the picture submissions because if i remember correctly from the first game uh you can only submit like a a specific amount to like get graded to get points and whatnot that kind of dictates a few a few move to other levels is it that same thing where you have to like select a a select few out of all the pictures you take so yeah so when you take pictures it actually rates it based on like the positioning of your pokemon how many pokemon are in the photo the scenery uh what they're doing in the photo um all all that stuff is taken into account and um it, it it rates numerically uh, it, it, it tallies up points and then based on your points it'll reward you uh one through four stars and then those stars are also have their own levels of uh bronze silver gold and diamond um so and then before you even submit the photos it actually tells you how many number stars you're gonna get from that photo that you're about to submit but it doesn't tell you like what kind of stars. Mm-hmm. Um, so, uh, and then it encourages you to keep going back and getting uh, different photos of that same Pokemon to fill up your album of like, so say you get, you get, say you get a picture of Pikachu and it's a one star picture, but there's still three other slots for a two star, three star and a four star picture. So it encourages you to go through and fill up the album for those four slots for each po- for each Pokemon, basically. I, I will say one complaint I had about that original, uh, pr- probably more so after you know uh, you and I did film school, is that in that original Professor Oak, I don't think he's a good photographer. He's just like, I want all the Pokemon <laughs> front and center. I want the body. I'm just like, no, dude, you got to use like the rule of thirds. You got to get your composition going. You got to have some nice headshots. He's like, no, fuck it. I just want it middle. Of this. <laughs> well, no. And now they have, now they have Todd all grown up uh, from the, from the original series uh, in the game. And so there's a lot of, there's a lot more, uh, elements of photography involved in in this game than there was in the past and then also there's like 
Lumina orbs that make uh, Pokemon do like uh, actions that they normally wouldn't, or they glow, which is which is cool. Uh, and also, there's like a scanning ability because you basically have a high tech like communicator camera um, that you can scan things, and it literally like it, it, it. Sometimes it'll cause Pokemon to do different actions too, and it's this whole thing. It, and then, of course, you can throw fruit at the Pokemon because what Pokemon was- snap <laughs> without throwing fruit? You know, so. I was about to ask, like, yeah, can you still just eat fruit in, like in a Pokemon's head? Or because you even had a what were they called in the first one? Pester balls, just like little gas balls that like make Pokemon sick and to make yeah. them do stuff. Uh, they make it a point to state that the fruits you're throwing at them are soft and light, <laughs> <laughs> so that no Pokemon were hurt or harmed in the making of this game. Yeah, and that original, uh, like, if I remember correctly, that sound effect was like a hard thunk. Yeah. <laughs> hey, Squirtle, just <laughs> fucking smash him right in the head. <laughs> uh, so, uh, let's see. Are, are, there any, are there any last topics, either, if you want to go over? Anything we might um, have missed or whatnot? Oh, uh, real quick, just re- real quick uh, segue back to my previous topic from, like, hours ago um so just coincidentally the silent hill merch is being released the day after the abandoned thing i'm just saying i'm just saying (laughs) (laughs) and the twitter page literally says uh releasing of new merch to in order to celebrate dot 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 so that's my news (laughs) (laughs) How about you, Atma? Anything you want to shout out or anything? Um, trying to think. I, uh, oh, I mean, um, I guess I've been playing Griftlands, uh, on my Switch. Uh, it just came out like a week or two ago. I think it's been in early access for almost two years now, uh, and finally got its 1.0 release. So I immediately grabbed it because I don't do early access. Um, and it, it's basically slay the spire. Uh, if you add actual narrative elements to it, um, lots of it's deck building roguelike, uh, I found it a little easier. Um, but I also don't know if that's just because I've played like 300 hours of slay the spire or not. Holy shit. <laughs> oh my God. Oh wow. Yeah. So like, it's a good I, game. <laughs> yeah. Slay the spire is fantastic. Uh, mm-hmm. Grifflands, like there's three characters and I've already beaten the first two story campaigns. And I don't, I haven't really looked into whether that's like, supposed to happen and then like the challenges like on like the harder difficulties or like repeat playthroughs or what um but the narrative is actually pretty interesting i really like the world building um so if anyone is interested in deck building games or roguelikes where there is like a a decent narrative attached to it uh there's cool choices you have to make uh different factions and and things like that and you can make enemies and make friends and you get bonuses and detriments to your uh, each battle based on who you've pissed off most recently and who, who likes you. Um, so yeah, that's, that's been like my switch game while I've been playing ratchet and clank uh, on, on the big screen. Nice. I might have to check nice. that out. Mm-hmm. All right. Um, yeah, it's basically going to do it for the show that covered a lot of Nintendo stuff. Well, I guess the majority of it was Nintendo stuff. The Final Fantasy and Ratchet and close out more Nintendo stuff with Pokemon. <laughs> yeah, thanks for hanging out, everyone. Um, the next scheduled stream should be tomorrow, 5 p.m. PST. Going to be more Bloodborne. I can't promise I'll beat any more bosses on the first time around. Uh, it'll probably be a very sad, depressing episode where I cry a lot. Uh, but yes, <laughs> thanks, everyone, for hanging out in chats. Um, and thank you, Corey and Atma, for being on the show. It's, I l- yeah. love having the both of you on. Yeah, it's been fun. Yeah, I'm <laughs> glad to be here. <laughs> uh, play Danganronpa. Play Danganronpa V3. Danganronpa 3 is very different from V3. That is a movie. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's going to do the show. And I'll see everyone next time. Bye. Bye.